Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. I'm just sharing uh, some thoughts today about standing firm. And uh, before I do that, I'm just going to ask the Lord to, to bless uh, as I share a few thoughts. Okay. Lord, we just come before you and we ask for your forgiveness and we ask for your cleansing. We ask for your mercy and your grace and we give you the praise, we, we give you the glory. And I just pray, Lord, this little video might be a blessing, a help and an encouragement to people in your name. Amen. Amen. Um, what I want to share with you is um, I, I had a really refreshing time um, a few days ago. I was listening to a, a conference, uh, the Legionnaire Conference, uh, online um, at the West Coast called Standing Firm 2012. And um, I'm just going to put R.C. Sproul on. We'll just listen to him because when we've listened to him, I'm going to give you the thoughts that I've had about the conference. Uh, R.C. Sproul is a good man. I, I, loved him. I love him to bits. And um, we'll just hear what he has to say for a minute and then I'll, I'll give a few thoughts. We're with you for this conference. We're very much encouraged to see so many of you out for it. And I have uh, basked in the glory of listening to the messages from the other men that have been brought, and I hope that we've all been edified by them. I particularly was interested in John's last address when he was so candid about his feelings when he wrote the gospel according to Jesus, how shocked he was that he would have to write a book like that in the evangelical world. And I remember being just as shocked at that time that the doctrine of justification would ever become an issue within evangelicalism, since evangelicalism is a broad spectrum of denominations, Protestant denominations dating back to the Reformation, and they all have our different distinctives. But the two concepts that unified evangelicalism for hundreds of years were first of all sola scriptura, the final authority of scripture, and secondly sola fide, uh, the doctrine of justification by faith alone. Uh, sola scriptura was considered the uh, formal cause of the 16th century reformation and sola fide, the material cause the matter, the substance of the issue that provoked the Reformation in the 16th century. And this unity through the years had been so strong, the last thing I really ever expected was that there would be a debate within evangelicalism on either one of these topics. Well, first came the erosion of confidence in the authority of scriptures within evangelicalism. You might recall the book that was written uh, by Harold Lenzel, The Battle for the Bible, and then the formation of ICBI, the International Council on Biblical Inerrancy, which had a 10-year initiative, trying to encourage the church, and particularly the evangelical church, not to abandon their confidence in the inspiration and authority of sacred scripture. But I, I understood something of that crisis because of the avalanche of criticism that the church has been exposed to on the doctrine of scripture in the last couple of hundred years. I remember that at the turn of the century, I don't remember it, but I remember reading about it. I'm thinking, when I say the turn of the century, I mean the turn of the 19th or the 20th century, that uh, it was said that biblical criticism had degenerated into biblical vandalism. So severe had been the attacks on sacred scripture. So I wasn't caught completely off guard that the issue of scripture would emerge even within evangelical churches. But that the doctrine of justification by faith alone would become an issue. And then the Lordship Salvation controversy where John MacArthur fought for the angels, that was a total shock, but not nearly the shock of what came in its wake. 
where Louis Evangelicals declared to the world that there was now a unity of faith in the gospel between Roman Catholics and Evangelicals. That really surprised me uh, radically. And before I get going with this, I just want to say I've heard many, many statements by leading representatives of various uh, sections of Christendom over the last 20 years about this, where I've heard one scholar write that the Reformation is over. I've heard other ones say that the Protestant Reformation was, quote, a tempest in a teapot. Another evangelical... So, um, that's R.C. Sproul, one of the great American theologians and the guy. Most of my ministry is, is sort of influenced by him, um, John MacArthur, um, John Piper, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones, <laughs> Spurgeon, <laughs> John Calvin, <laughs> John Chrysostom. Those are the people that I find an, uh, a blessing, and R.C. Sproul I find a blessing. What R.C. Sproul is, is saying is, um, he's just surprised at uh, the way things have gone over the years. He was not expecting the shift from doctrinal truth to ecumenicism and other things uh, that he is seen in his lifetime. So let's just look at a scripture, and it says, uh, Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place. Ephesians 6.14 uh, Another translation, uh, King James Bible, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. And we need to be standing firm, folks. I don't think we realise the crisis that evangelicalism is in. The Evangelical Church is in a terrible, terrible crisis. Uh, and I'm going to explain some of the crises. First of all, there is a famine of the word. Okay? There are few preachers who are actually teaching the word of God. This is causing a massive problem because many, many people who are starving for the word of God are not getting fed. Those who are teaching the word of God are finding it extremely hard. They are f going against the tide of an avalanche that's going against them. Um, there's an avalanche of entertainment within the church. It's, it's come like a great big tidal wave on the church and people want to be entertained and anybody who starts to teach the word is frowned upon who wants to teach it in depth. So, that's a crisis in itself. There is a great apathetic crisis. There's, there's apathy amongst many of the Lord's people. But we've had, and there are, a number of issues that have come up. Number one, ecumenicalism, evangelicals joining with Catholics. Now, I have nothing against Catholic, uh, Catholic people, but Catholic doctrine is against the Bible. Catholic doctrine says you're not saved by belief in Christ. It's got a whole lot of doctrines that that go against what salvation is. So we, we still love Catholic people, but their doctrine is wrong. And, and not only wrong, it's dangerous. But many of the lost people are rushing into ecumenicism, ecumenicalism and getting involved with the Catholic um, church and that is wrong that is not biblical all right it's biblical to be united with the Lord's people if they are united in biblical truth but if a church apostatizes it's wrong to be involved with them and if you're a Catholic and you've become born again you need to get out of the Catholic Church you need to start a new church or plant a church according to biblical truth so, anyhow, ecumenicalism is a big area that that has come a long way. Uh, secondly, dead orthodoxy. There's a lot of Calvinism that's dead. That it's not nurturing people. It's not got any love 
So dead orthodoxy is a is a big problem because where there are churches where they're teaching the truth, often it's dead. There's no life. There's no power in it. The third thing is is the charismatic movement. Now, now God has used the charismatic movement, speaking in tongues and all this, the gifts of the Spirit and all that. But things have gone far, 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 far away from the New Testament. And now we're in a, a realm of health and wealth, preachers preaching health and wealth. And this has taken over many churches because these health and wealth churches are influenced by the te television where these health and wealth preachers have television uh, programs and people are reading these health and wealth ministry books in their churches and it's causing problems because people rather than seeking Christ rather than seeking his word are seeking the spectacular and this is dangerous I'm not saying that God doesn't use them I'm not saying that I, I don't want to argue whether the gifts of the Spirit are here for here or not. What I'm saying is there's a danger. There's danger. People are getting deluded by this health and wealth gospel. Come to Jesus and you'll have a new car. Is not the gospel. It's come to Jesus because he died for you and he commands you to trust in him. That's the gospel. So there's the health and wealth gospel problem. But then there are problems academically that have come into the church and have come into the seminaries a few years ago about eight years ago there was a, a famous youth worker in Amer in England famous theolo uh, a youth worker but uh, a sort of professional uh, kind of person who set himself up to be a writer and theologian wrote a book and basically said that Jesus dying on the cross was child abuse uh, now that happened about eight years ago and it and it was debated within the evangelical circles in England and it spread over to America but there are theologians in the church that are challenging traditional doctrines like the death of Christ alright the gospel Jesus died for our sin Anybody who says it's child abuse, they're talking nonsense. That's what the Lord has done for us. It's the gospel. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's glorious. But you can see these theologians that have got in are dangerous. Now, that was eight years ago. These things have not been recanted. These things have not been sorted out. Youth workers have been trained under this kind of teaching and gone into evangelical churches. Another problem is is um, Israel theology what I mean Israel theology um, there's an academic called N.T. Wright I don't like to use his name but it's the only way to to make sure that you know what's, ha what, what's happening but N.T. Wright has basically wrote a lot of books he's a bishop uh, eminent person and he interprets scripture with everything from Israel's eyes so what that means is when you believe in Jesus Christ there's not the emphasis upon your personal belief in Christ it has to be interpreted through the eyes of Israel so when you believe in Christ it's not you believing in Christ you're the people of Israel the people of God and, all, and so what that means is it takes away the personal aspect of salvation so for example when you read uh, the prodigal son and as you read the prodigal son it's about a person who repents and goes to the father but an NT right reading of that text would be no that's Israel going to the father so in other words it rewrites the text that are about you trusting in Christ rather than it being personal it's about society and social and it blinds people for the need for the, for the personal belief in Christ so in other words there are even though I respect NT right in, in some ways his teaching is very dangerous because people are not spotting the danger there and this is spread all over the world so I'm not saying you can't learn you can learn from N.T. Wright you can get a lot of good stuff out of it he's very good at defending the historicity of Christ but his te teaching is, is, is very dangerous if people aren't aware of the danger um, 
we had um, 15 years ago the openness of God theology that God doesn't know anything uh, uh, God doesn't know the future and he's not in control etc that went in the seminaries and it's still out there today we have the emergent church or we've had the emergent church that denies traditional doctrines uh, people coming out in that movement who said that there is no doctrine of hell so you get the picture there's there's a massive I don't want to discourage you but there's a massive onslaught on the evangelical faith stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled round your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place stand your ground putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness so don't get bogged down with the heresies don't get bogged down with the dangerous things that are going round you know I've just filled you in on a few things that are happening but don't get preoccupied with that get preoccupied with this get into this study the word of God get into the legionnaire ministries of R.C. Sproul I'll put a link to this conference and study his material will help you to grow and be strong in the battle I put a website to John MacArthur's site where you can learn the word of God and the truth of God so be strong in the word you need to get grounded as a young Christian you need to get into the word if you're a, a pastor you need to get into the word we need to get into this and get strong in this because the truth is being attacked and if you're if the truth is going to be attacked this is your defense the Bible so you need to learn it and grow in it and study it you need to feed on it every day <coughs> You need to be listening to the finest preachers, the finest of the wheat you need to be feeding on. Who are the finest of the wheat? Well, I'll put links to the fine wheat on the web to guide you into spiritual refreshment, into spiritual renewal, so that you grow mighty in the Word of God. And you don't get pulled down by all this heresy and all these foolish... Now, I just want to say something. I don't want you to run off and say, oh, Jay, you know, I've listened to Jay, and, you know, Jay's saying there's loads of heresies everywhere and everything, and I don't want you to go off and then, you're, every time your pastor's preaching, or every time you watch the TV or anything, you say, oh, oh, there's heresy. Because there are people who go around, and that's all they do. All they do is, is look for a heresy here and a heresy there, and they, they argue about this translation, that translation, and, and whatever, and, and that's no life. Paul says, we preach Christ crucified. The Lord Jesus Christ said, go and make disciples. Your job is to go and make disciples, not to go around hunting for heresy. You get along a, a child of God who needs your comfort and disciple them. Spend time with those who need the word of God and help them. Give them your attention give them your love give them the word of God that is what they need not someone going around where is the heresy where is the heresy yeah we've got to be vigilant we've got to be wise we've got to see the heresies coming and the dangers coming we've got to do that we've got to be watchmen on the walls like Ezekiel and watching for the danger and warning the church but also we need to be in the trenches of, of the needs of people. We need to be down into the trenches where we minister to people. Where we show them the love of Christ. Where we feed on the word of God. He said, Jay, I'm only a young Christian, man. I'm only a young Christian. Good. Get your helmet on and get into the battle, folks. As a young Christian, get into the battle. Get your helmet on and get your spiritual rifle, the word of God, and get into the fight. Get down to the prayer meeting. Get down into the places where you can evangelize and preach and serve the living God. Because God has called you to serve him. He said, Jay, why are you preaching like this? I'm preaching. Because God doesn't want you to be looking for heresies all the time. The heresies will come, folks. You'll see the heresies. You'll see them. You won't have to keep looking for them. 
And you be the watchman and you say, well, I'm in the word of God. I can see. I can see it coming, brothers and sisters. I can see it coming. You be the watchman. But don't keep going all the time after heresies. Go out there and minister the word of God. You know, do you remember that film, Hamburger Hill? Hamburger Hill. Do you remember that? And uh, the American soldiers had to go up the hill to take the hill. And they got slaughtered. And they went up and they got slaughtered. They went up and others got slaughtered. They went up. Eventually they took the hill. You find a Hamburger Hill today! Sister, brother, you find a hamburger hill today and you go and die on that hill. You go find a plot of land for the, for the world. And you say, I'm going to take this land for Jesus. I'm going to take this land for the Lord. I'm going to go down and I'm going to preach the gospel to the drug addicts. And I'm going to serve them and I'm going to live for them. I'm going to go to the prostitutes and serve and preach the word of God. I'm going to go to the poor. I'm going to go to the need, needy. I'm going to go and find my hamburger hill and do it for Jesus. You know what will happen on that hamburger hill? You're going to die. You're going to die. Your reputation's going to die. Your pride's going to die. Your life's going to die. And when the seed has died, what happens when the seed dies? I'll tell you what happens. The seed dies. But at a certain time, new roots come. And as the roots come, new life comes. And as new life comes, the tree comes. And as the tree comes, the tree comes tree comes the fruit comes and as you die on your hamburger hill sister and brother as you die and now you're going to die folks you're going to die you're going to be so broken in a thousand bits you're going to wonder what on earth did you do that for and when you're broken and you die then God will start to spring little sprouts in you, sprouts. Uh, and little twigs will come out of you, and, and little things will start growing in you, and you'll start growing branches, and you'll start bearing fruit with deep, deep humility, deep, deep love, because you know when you went on that hamburger hill, it was God that broke you, and it was God that made you, and it was God that used you. And then people are going to be blessed. The fruit out of your life is going to be a blessing to those in need. You're going to touch people like nobody's been touched before. Because the Spirit of God is moving through you. Because it's nothing of you. You're dead. It's nothing of you. It's the Spirit working in you. Touching the needy and the broken. And the Spirit of God moving through your life. Hitting and moving and, and, and wooing into the people who were broken all through you. Because you were broken. The Spirit moves through you and can use you. And those who were broken are brought into the presence of Jesus Christ. And that's where it is, folks. It's in Christ, in Him. That's where it all goes. That's what we're doing. That's what it's all for. To move into Christ. To press them into Christ. I was listening to a lecture the other day. And the man tells a story of, a, of, a, of an artist room. And in the artist room. Excuse me. There's loads of paintings. And all the paintings. Have been someone's come in and they've thrown paint all over and they've pushed all the paintings down. <clears throat> and then someone comes in, a master painter, and pulls all the paintings up. And the master painter starts to paint. And he makes all these wrecked paintings into beautiful pictures. When you get to your hamburger hill and you die on your hamburger hill, and Christ resurrects you. 
in that ministry. What will happen is the master craftsman Jesus wants you to go out and find his damaged paintings. People, drug addicts, prostitutes, homeless, the rich, the poor, the needy, the lost, the lonely. And as you go out to them, they are God's work of art, but they are damaged. And as you go out and minister the beautiful word of God, the master craftsman Jesus Christ is going to use you as you minister the word to move upon these broken works of art and make them into beautiful works of art. But you know something? That ain't going to happen if you don't stand firm. It's time you stood firm. It's time you woke up and saw that today is a day of a massive assault on the word of God and his truth. It's time to stand up. It's time to sound an alarm. It's time to get ready for the fight. Stand firm. Therefore having fastened the belt of truth round your waist. And having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Stand firm. Strengthen what remains. Be strong in God's word. Be strong in this. Get grounded in this. Get deep in this. Get strong. Stand firm. Find your hamburger hill. Die on it. And then take the people to the master craftsman. Hallelujah. What a saviour. Let's pray. I'm sorry for shouting folks I'm just getting excited this ain't a preaching or it's just a little thought for a day <coughs> you get the sermons to bother <laughs> Lord we're amazed at your greatness we confess Lord in crises and in needs we haven't got anything to offer we're weak and frail, but we know that you are sovereign. We know that you are great. We know that you're powerful. We know that you are mighty. Lord, I just give you these few thoughts, Lord. I just pray that you'd use them for your glory. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to stand firm. I pray that those who heard your word today would stand firm. I pray, O oh God, it is hard, Lord, but we pray that you would give us a Hamburger Hill. Lord, it's not easy, it's not something that we want, Lord, but we know it's the only way to blessing that each one of us has got to find a hill, a Hamburger Hill, and die on it. Die to self, Lord, is not easy. Die to self is not easy, Lord. We know that, and we need you to help us. So, Lord, we pray, help us to die on the hamburger hill of life help us Lord to die to self help us Lord to be resurrected in the power of the spirit and to minister your love and grace to those in need show us Lord where your works of art are lead us to them Lord let us not be concerned Lord with numbers or with fame or with power or with glory or with or status but let us just be concerned to die on our hills and to bring people to the master craftsman and to see you at work in broken lives that they might find life oh God we cannot do it Lord we cannot do it Lord we can't do it we haven't got the strength we haven't got it Lord we've got nothing Lord we've got nothing we can't do it so Lord we pray fill us Fill us with your power, with your strength, with your grace. Fill the people here today who've heard this message. Fill them, Lord, with your grace and with your love and with your power. And enrich them and bless them. And, Lord, send them out. And help them to die on that hamburger hill. And help them to minister your word to the needy, to the broken. So that they might know your love and rejoice in the Lord our God. 
Bless them, dear Lord. Bless these dear souls who are hearing your word today. Bless them, and oh God, may they have a rich harvest. Jesus, be with them, I pray, and be with me, Lord. Oh God, fill us and strengthen us, we pray. We ask this, Lord, in thy name, and for thy glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, folks. I'm sorry for waffling. I'm a nobody. I'm a nothing, folks. But I just couldn't help speaking up. <laughs> take care, folks. God bless you. And uh, take care. And uh, see you around. Okay? Take care. God bless. This is Jay on Swimming 100 making a brief appearance. <laughs> take care. See you tomorrow if you're around. God bless. Don't forget the conference. At Legionnaires Conference, I'll put you a link to it. Awesome sermons. Richly bless you. God bless.